Hey guys, another right dev here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we added data store and improvements. So you can see, I just joined this game and I spot in with 12 slaps because of our data store. And also, you can see up here, we added this glove variable or a glove leader stat right here. And whenever we equip a glove, you can see that it changes. We also fixed this portal bug which would only let one player through and just occasionally just like bug out and stop working. So now it always works. And we also added naming to our gloves because before they were just numbers. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoy this tutorial video. I will see you there. Congratulations to Bistam7 uh, for winning this daily giveaway. Make sure to join the group for a chance to win 15 robux every video anyway i hope you enjoy your 15 robux back to the video okay so so the first thing we're gonna do is fix the door bug because occasionally when you walk through it it says attempt to index no c frame so we are going to fix that so what we're gonna do now is we're going to click on the portal and we can open up the script here as you can see i already have it pulled up and we can just go ahead and delete this li this line right here. So we're gonna do is we're gonna set a variable for the spawn position or the spawn we landed on. So local tele spawn is going to be equal to spawns colon find first child. And we're gonna get the tele spawn or the random spawn. So now we're gonna check if it exists. So if tele spawn exists. So if tally spawn then we're gonna do local tally pause it's going to be equal to tally spawn dot position so now we're gonna move them to the teleport position so we're gonna do hit dot parent colon move to and we're gonna move them to the teleport position and then what we can go ahead and do is just cut all of this out and paste it right here all right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do else so if tele spawn does not exist we're going to wait 0.25 seconds we're gonna do script dot disabled it's going to be equal to false then we can go ahead and return so what this is doing is this checking if our spawn exists and then it's going to teleport us to there and this is just the stuff we had from uh, previous episodes but if it does not exist we're going to disable the script and return so they'll have to try to enter the portal again so now if we go ahead and test it out i just realized i've been recording this time without being in full screen so we're in full screen now but if we go ahead and walk into the portal it's going to let us through and if we were to get the error again, nothing will happen. And we'll just have to try to walk through the portal again. So the next thing we're going to do is improve our hand system. So instead of being our hands being numbered, we're actually going to give them names. So in server storage, we can open up our hands folder. And in our hands, we can go ahead and add an, an int value. So there we go, I've added in an int value to all of the hands, and we're just gonna go ahead and rename them. So we can rename this one to one, we're gonna rename this one to two, and this one to three. So you're gonna match the value with the number that's up here. So for hand one, you're gonna name the value to one. For hand two, you're gonna name the value to two. For hand three, you're gonna name the value to three, and so on. Now what we can do is we can rename the tool itself. So our, uh, our first one, which is our default glove right here, I'm going to go ahead and rename it to default glove. Hand 2, which is our green glove, I'm going to go ahead and rename to green glove. And hand 3, which is our red glove, we can go ahead and rename to red glove. So now that we have our hands renamed, back in our teleport script that teleports the players to the lobby. After line 15, we're going to create for loop. So for i, comma v in pairs, 
and then we're going to get hands fold colon get children we can do do first of all we can delete these three lines down here which i forgot to delete earlier all right and then back in our for loop i'm going to set a new variable for hands so local hand is going to be equal to v colon find first child and we're going to get equipped dot value so we're looking for the hand with our value in it so we're going to check if hand then and this is to prevent errors um we're going to set hand to be hand dot parent so instead of the hand being the value itself we're going to set the hand to be the parent um which is the hand itself and then we're going to clone the hand so local cloned hand is going to be equal to hand colon clone and then we're going to set the cloned hand parent so cloned hand dot parent is going to be equal to player dot backpack just like that so if we were to test it out now you can see if i walk into the portal it's going to give me the default glove properly named but the only problem is if i click e our abilities don't work so now we need to fix our abilities as well so what we can do now is you can open up starter player and starter player scripts and you're going to edit our input handler and this is pretty simple so on line 11 after script.parent.parent.character we're instead of being colon find first child equip dot value we're going to do colon find first child of class and we're going to get tool and then we're going to do colon find first child and we're going to get equipped dot value then so what this is doing is instead of looking for a tool with the name of equip dot value we're instead looking for um a object in the tool class and then we're seeing if it has the equipped value in it, which is the int value we added earlier. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this part and we're going to paste it right here as well on line 19. And then what we're gonna do is we can open up starter player, ability GUI, a text button, and the local script. And same thing, instead of being in line 16, so that being colon find first child, we're going to paste the same thing here. Colon find first child of class tool, colon find first child equip dot value. We're going to paste that as well for line 23. So now if we were to test it out, our abilities should work as well. So I have my default glove here. If I clicked E, you can see that the ability does indeed work. And if I were to play it on phone and walk through the portal, if I equip the glove and click the button, you can see it plays the fart sound effect. So now what we're going to do is just like in slap battles, when you equip a hand, you have a leader stats thing saying which hand you have equipped. And that is what we are going to add. So in the leader stats script, which you can find in server script service, I just happen to have it open already for some reason um you're gonna go ahead and open it up and you're gonna create a variable for your glove so you can do local glove which is going to be equal to instance dot new and we're gonna create a string value which you can set the parent of it to leader stats we're gonna set the name so glove dot name is going to be equal to glove and you're set the value of it to glove dot value equal to default glove and the reason why we're saying it's a default glove is because when the player joins the game they immediately start with a default glove so now what we're gonna do is in all of our handstands here we're gonna make it so when we click on it and if we have enough slaps not only are we gonna set the equipped value for our door um, but we're also going to be setting the value of our glove uh, leader stats that we just created so we're going to start with our default glove if we go ahead and open it up and you can open up the hitbox and click detector and the script 
after line three where it says local equipped we're going to set the variable for the glove so local glove is going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot glove and local glove value is going to be equal to default glove so what this line right here is doing or this one's doing is it's getting the glove variable we just created or the glove layer stat we just created and this one is just setting so whenever the player clicks on the deep on our glove stand right here this is going to give us this glove value we're just going to give the player this glove value so down here after equip dot value equals one we're going to do glove dot value is going to be equal to glove value so we can just go ahead and do the same thing for each one so we can open up the script for the green handstand and again we're going to do the same thing so local glove is going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot glove local glove value is going to be equal to and this time we're going to set to green glove and down here we're going to do glove dot value is going to be equal to glove value and for the red one we are just going to do it one last time so we can open up the hitbox script local glove glove is going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot glove and local glove value is going to be equal to red glove oops i put a minus sign not an equal sign and then we're going to do glove dot value is going to be equal to glove value so now if i go ahead and test it out i'm just going to give myself free slaps from the developer console because i'm too lazy to grind them there we go i just gave myself 50 slaps so if I were to equip a glove, you can see that my value changes from the default glove that we had when we first started to green glove when I click on this one. And then if you click on this one, it sets the value to red glove. And of course, if I click on default glove again, it's going to set this back to default glove. Also, by the way, just to let you know, I'm definitely going to get um, people saying this in the comments. So just to let you know that if you get this bug right here, um, which happens to do with the input handler or the phone handler it doesn't actually matter you see the abilities still work so if you get that you can just go ahead and ignore it anyways now there's only one thing left for us to do which is our data store so in game settings you're gonna want to publish a game make sure it's published if it's not already published you're gonna go to security and you're gonna to enable studio access to API services because we are going to be scripting our data store. And you're going to click save. So in service script service, we can go ahead and add in a script, which you can go ahead and rename to data store, just like that. So in the script, we're going to create a variable for data store service. So local ds for data store. It's going to be equal to game calling get service. I'm going to get data store service. And then we're gonna get calling get data store and we're gonna just come up with our name for our data store so we can do save slaps all right so now whenever a player uh, joins a game we're gonna get a function so game dot players dot player added calling connect function and you can name it to player so first of all um, just to fix some bugs we're gonna wait 0.05 0 0.5 this is just to fix a bug so i'm going to set a variable for player key or plr key so local player key is going to be equal to uh, parentheses quotation id underscore and then we're going to do dot dot player dot user id and then we're going to do local s1 which is our first save our only save is going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot slaps so what this is doing is it's just saying save one for our s1 to our slaps they can do local get save it's going to be equal to ds 
colon get at sync and we're gonna get player key so now we're gonna check if get saved exists so if get saved then we're gonna do s1 dot value is going to be equal to get saved brackets and we're gonna do one and else so if we currently have what this is doing is just checking if we already have saved data for this um, get saved for our slaps and if we don't then we're going to save our number so local num for saving or number for saving is going to be equal to and we're going to create a list so I'm going to put pointy brackets we're going to go down two lines and we're just going to do s1 dot value and after this pointy bracket right here we can do ds calling get as sync and we're going to get plr key colon or comma number for saving and then after line 18 we're going to go down two lines and we're going to do game dot players dot player removing colon connect function and again we're going to set the parameter to player player just like that and then we're going to set we're going to do ds colon set a sync and we're going to do quotations id underscore and then we're going to do dot dot plr dot user id comma pointy bracket again we're going to go down a line and we're going to do plr dot leader stat um, dot slaps dot value so what this is doing is when a player joins the game uh, we are checking if they have any saved data and if so they're setting their slaps to their data that they have saved and what this is doing is when they're leaving the game they are getting their data and they are giving and they're just giving them their slaps back. So if we were to go ahead and test this out. So if I were to go down here and grind like 10 slaps real quick. Okay, kind of got lazy, so I only grinded it four slaps. But if we were to go ahead and stop it. Once we go ahead and rejoin. You should see that yet we come in with four slaps still. And if I were to get even more. All right, so this time I went to 11 slaps. If I were to go ahead and stop it, when I rejoin, you can see I come in with 11 slaps and I can immediately go ahead and equip a green glove because I already have enough to equip it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I very much appreciate it and I spend a lot of time on these tutorials videos. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. See you in part five. Bye.